welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. So I was all plugged in, um, the video suite's all set up, and I thought, wow, in this Hancock's VMware Half Hour, let's just go for it and do a um, ESXi 7.030 to Q upgrade using VLCM. I've got to do it anyway, so we might as well video it. Um, and uh, capture warts and all and see what goes wrong. Okay, so here's an ILO connection. Well, it's not technically ILO. I think it's some sort of kind of weird AmiBIOS BMC over Java, which these days is a bit dodgy. Uh, but anyway, so ESXi006 is the, um, the host that we're going to update. It's currently running uh, 22348816. Um, so uh, vCenter server 7.03. Um, the latest, I updated it yesterday evening. I don't think we need to do that anymore. Uh, but I had to do that via VAMI, so the old-fashioned legacy doodah thing, um, because it doesn't support the um, reduced downtime upgrade function that um, uh, vCenter Server 8 does. Um, so, basically, um, I use images. I don't use baselines anymore. Um, I think, um, at some point, I think that baselines are going to be... Um, uh, deprecated anyway um, so anyway so I actually basically assign an image uh, to the cluster and the image that I've actually basically using is 7.0 u3q uh, build 23794027 I'm going to kick this off I've already done remediate um, these hosts don't support quick boot it's warning me about a couple of um, vibs um, it's going to tell me that they're removed during a remediation I thought this had been removed before in remediation, um, but one of them is an NFS uh, V88i plugin, and the other one is a um, CLI tool, which is not technically supported for the, um, the controller. So I'm just going to basically select remediate, uh, accept the terms, and click start remediation. And we'll let that tick over in the background whilst I have a little chin wag before I put this on pause. Uh, and this... I think there are still too many people, really, that are... Um, I have um, written articles and have produced videos, and I like to call it the dirty upgrade version. And that's basically where you log into the SSH host and you do an ESX, ESX CLI software vib update, blah, blah, blah. Whack, enter. Um, if your ESX hosts have internet access, it goes off, it pulls the... Um, the update from the internet and patches the server. Um, it's a method that people have been using to patch their servers uh, since about 5.5, I think, ESXi 5.5. Um, I think it does raise a question, and it was asked, um, that I think I had a couple of questions where, had a couple of questions that were questioning whether or not that they need to purchase support anymore. As we all know, ESXi licenses are perpetual. ESXi 8 licenses are perpetual. So if you don't renew your support, they're not going to expire. They don't have an expiration. In my thinking, the only thing that you're not going to be entitled to anymore is the ability to ring up Broadcom and or ring them up or log a support call. But of late, I am hearing and I have seen that some support for some organizations now has been moved to their resellers or distributors. Um, I'm hearing um, comments that um, I logged a support call on the Broadcom portal and it told me that I had to go to somewhere else uh, or I had to click a link and I had to go to Ingram Micro. Um, and then I think the question, uh, the comments that I had with that interaction with Ingram Micro were not particularly brilliant. So I think the question you've got to ask yourself um, really is if you're only paying the money for support, how good is the support? And I think one of the questions actually basically came back and said, well, I'm purchasing support so I can get updates. Well, you haven't seen me log in anywhere using VLCM to get my update for ESXi 7.03.
The same is true for ESXi 8 at present, uh, and the same is for vCenter Server 7 and vCenter Server 8. At the moment, none of those appear to be behind a paywall. They could easily put, be put behind a paywall and you'd have to log in. Um, but for that functionality to appear, it would require a change to vCenter server or a change to ESXi, um, or they'd have to remove those updates from um, the VMware repo, which they could easily do. Um, I don't think updates are there anymore for 6.7. Uh, 6 or 6.5 or 5.5 or 5. Or why would they be their end of life? Uh, but they still do exist for 7.0 and 8.0. Um, the question really um, is, if you don't have a support agreement, are you entitled to download those updates and install them? That's a good question. And maybe that is a question for Broadcom or your reseller or your distributor to see what they have to say. Um, I don't really have an answer for that. Um, Broadcom VMware can include the ability to sign into the Broadcom site or the VMware site uh, because in VCF that is a function that you have to include your username and password for the Broadcom site to get updates. Um, is it going to come for 7.0 or 8.0? Or is Broadcom just going to discontinue 7.0 and 8.0 when they go end of life in hope that everybody is now using VCF 9.0? Um, I think that's the question. Anyway, okay, so um, <clears throat> we're getting host recommendations and we've started to install the image on host ESXi 006. Um, so I've waffled on enough uh, about whether or not do you need support, do you not need support. Uh, and of course, you know, if you do want to ask questions uh, about VMware vSphere, VMware Workstation, uh, VCF, uh, then you've got your friendly uh, experts on Experts Exchange to answer your questions for you. Um, and I think you might actually find that a membership to Experts Exchange uh, is far cheaper than a membership or a contract uh, with Broadcom, just a little bit cheaper. And anyway, so with that thought, I'll let you ponder on that while I put this on pause and we'll come back um, when the host has actually started to be uh, rebooted. <clears throat> and just after pausing that, uh, I could see that it said remediate cluster at 95% and you can actually basically start to see there that um, the initialization um, of uh, the vKernel shutdown helper um, on our host there. Uh, so the ESXi 23794027 has been installed and we're just waiting for it to restart. And there we have one shiny new updated uh, ESXi 7.03Q build 23794027 uh, done with uh, VLCM. Again, I'm going to stress, I don't think that enough people use VLCM. I don't know why. I don't know why they're, if they're afraid of it um, or they've just got used to using the command line all these years um, or it's my fault uh, for writing an article and doing videos about it. Um, but it really does take all the heavy lifting out um, of updating your host. And especially if you've got vendor add-ons and firmware and driver add-ons and additional components that all can be included and so, I'm going to say slipstreamed, but mm, don't really like that word, incorporated into the bundle when you do your update. So you can pick the latest vendor add-on uh, I've showed you this before in another video. Um, so I'm not really going to basically show you doing ESXi 008 and ESXi 10 because it's going to be exactly the same procedure. 
Um, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to do, there's a little tool that we use in the lab and we use a lot in production and I've never, I've never discussed it. I've never posted about it. I don't know why. Um, I think it's just one of those things that it's, it's so um, habitual for me to use it as part of my day job that I forget really maybe to mention it to other people or assume that you already use it, maybe. Um, anyway, so uh, come back and uh, watch the next episode of uh, Hancock's VMware Half Hour. Goodbye now.